So this example will go over a full structural model and this follows a CFA section because full structural models tend to also have a measurement model or they have to have a measurement model and the CFA is usually the measurement model portion and then to make it a full structural model we're going to add predictive values between latents. So we're going to use those latents to predict other variables or other latents. So in this particular example I'm actually going to use two types of latents. A formative latent, which means that the uh, indicators or the uh, measured variables predict a latent variable instead of a reflexive latent, which is more the more normal version where the latents predict the measurement indicators. And I'm going to do that because, uh, one, it helps if you know how to code it, but also to um, go over um, when you might consider that a variable is a composite a combination of a bunch of different scores rather than an underlying um, factor for these uh, indicators. Okay. So we've got three different variables here. We've got a university composite and so we're going to measure that with um, class and so it's a perception of the way that school is going essentially for a student. So how are their grades? What are their classes like? What are their academic goal, goals and are they reading, reaching them? Um, social, which is a perception of the other part of university life. Do they have friends? Do they feel like they're supported? Are they connected to campus? Are they going to events? It's just kind of the social networking aspect of campus. Uh, and then learning, which is different from class in the sense of um, its learning environment. Do they feel like the professors are um, there for them? And that, do they have academic support? Do they fit with their major? Are they happy with the options on campus? which is a little different than how's um, English 101 going. Okay, so learning is a more global variable. So all three of those are going to create a university composite. So it's not something about, it is something about the university that's creating these things, but it's not, we don't really want to say that university predicts these things because people are all different. So we're just going to create a composite score of how a student feels about a university. So it's kind of like combining them into one variable. Uh, and then we're going to look and see if that is related to or predicts, in this example, a psychological factor. Okay. And then we're going to use depression, anxiety, and stress, which are common problems on campus, um, in the sense that if classwork is going poorly, that might cause anxiety, um, and it might cause stress. And then also look at a health factor. So any chronic health issues the student has, uh, physical fitness, so like active health. Um, so are they going to the gym? Are they, um, are they, you know, doing the freshman 15, that sort of thing? And then sexual health, which is an important component for um, college students. And so you have to think about um, are, you know, we're talking about STIs, but also just healthy relationships um, with partners. And so all of that we're going to combine into a health factor. So my overall health does predict those sorts of things. So the university variable should be a formative um, composite score and it should predict the uh, psychological and health factors and we're expecting that as university perception changes we might also see changes in mental and physical health symptoms in the sense that as things start to go poorly um, the other two variables should also be affected and vice versa as things are going well you should feel less stressed and happier. Um, and maybe you get out and go to the gym more because you're not um, freaking out about your test. Okay. Uh, all of these variables have been, have been scaled so that higher scores are worse. So if you have a higher score on the university composite, you're upset with the university because they're all kind of scaled in different ways. So where they're scaled so that all of them are positive is worse. So we have more anxiety or more stress or more chronic health problems um, or bad sexual health. Um, whereas the university composite would be they're not doing well, they don't feel like they have friends, and they feel like um, no one's going to help them. Okay, so they're all scored to be bad as high. So what I've done is giving you the um, code. So I made things a little easier. This is the covariance table and all the row names for the data. So I'm just going to cut and paste that into R. We'll see if it'll go with it. So remember, first rule is always to load the library. So we're going to use Levon and Simplot. <clears throat> All right, so we got both of those libraries loaded. I'm going to clear out what I had working on this to make sure it worked last night. There we go. 
right, so let's load the covariance table. <clears throat> and then let's also give everything names. All right, so our data is now loaded up and it has names. And let's <clears throat> build a model from this example. So I'm gonna go back to Word here. And let's look at how this should work. Right? So our university variable should be a composite. So the way that you do composites in, um, oh, I'm not gonna do that because Word doesn't handle the quotes very well. The way you build composites is you use the um, less than sign and then the tilde. And that says that um, if you think about it as pointing at university, it says create this latent variable that is um, where the indicators or these manifest variables I'm going to list next are predicting that composite. So I'm going to create a university variable that is combined the combination of we're going to use class plus social plus learning. And so the way I've been thinking about it is this little arrow is pointing at it as opposed to a reflexive latent where it's equals tilde. Uh, and then I called it learn here, so let's use the right name. Uh, the next thing we're gonna have is a psychological variable. And that's gonna be a reflexive latent. So I'm gonna use these variables to, um, I'm gonna say that psych predicts these things. So that's the equals tilde. And so I got depression, anxiety, and stress. And then our third latent combination is um, health. And that's gonna be a reflexive latent. So it's gonna be chronic, oops, spelling matters plus physical plus sex. So that gets all the variables together. And if I just did this, it would correlate them, which would be fine, but we're wanting to do this as a full structural model. So this is the build of the um, measurement model where every variable is, every latent variable is measured in some way. Uh, and now I have to add the full structural component to it. Okay. So what I'm saying is the university composite should predict both the psych and health factors. So I'm gonna take the university one, and this time it's gonna predict going out. So it's equal to um, the psych factor and health. Okay. And if you aren't really sure which one to use, run it, look at a picture and go, oh no, I used the wrong one and fix it. So we're going to use this combination, and the big difference here is the type of indicator that we're using, so formative or reflexive. So I want to say model equals, and then my open quotes, I'm going to cut and paste in what I did in Word, and I'm going to run that. So I've got my model built, now I have to run the model. And so we're going to do model.fit equals, I'm going to use the sim function this time. I'm pretty sure you can use the CFA function too, but since this is a full model, I'm gonna try sim instead. We're gonna say model, and then it has to know where the data is in some form. Well, I don't have the full data set, so instead I'm gonna do sample.cov, and that's my data, so data.cov, and then number of observations, oops, sample. Number of observations, and let's go 300. I'm not sure if I actually said in the assignment, but it's 300. All right, so I'm going to run that, see what happens. All right, so it didn't like something in my text here. So let's go back and see if it's just not happy with my tildes. Okay, something about cutting and pasting from Microsoft Word it doesn't like, but the model fit ran. So let me get a summary of that model fit. Okay, remember you want R squared is true to check for Haywood cases. And then um, we want to probably also look at the standardized solution. Standardized equals true. <clears throat> All right, so first thing you wanna do is look for Haywood cases. Um, because I found out recently it does not give you a warning. And so I'm going to scroll through and look at my variances. Look, they're all positive. 
All right, <clears throat> and then my R squareds. So some of my R squareds are really high because this model is pretty predictive, but none of them go over one. So that's good. And I don't have any covariances. So um, you don't want to check those correlations. You want to check those correlations for being over one as well, but I don't have any, so I don't need it at this case. Next thing I want to do is look at my pathways and see if they're significant. Okay, so it looks like psychology is fairly well measured by depression, anxiety, and stress. Okay, the loadings for those on the standardized all are pretty strong. Uh, health is being measured pretty well by our three health variables. And so those are all pretty high loadings here. Um, my <clears throat> Let's skip uni here for a second and look at my composite score. Now my composite score is not doing a whole lot for me. So class is predicting university life and social is predicting university life, but neither of those are significant. And look how small they are over here. Okay, so it's really, our university score is really learning's pulling all the weight. And you can think about these as a, as a regression, because um, that's what it is. So um, the weights for learning are much higher than the other two variables. So I don't know if my class variable or my social variables really do me any good. Um, and then the next thing I want to look at is the overall prediction. And so for university life, predicting psychology and health, uh, they're both fairly strong, 0 0.5, 0 0.8, uh, and they're probably both significant. Now I can switch this to standardized equals all, and so I can see if they're significant, but it's 0.51, it's probably significant. Uh, and so the only thing that's really not working in my model at the moment is the composite scores here. Okay. All right, so what's next? So we've, uh, now we need a picture, so include picture. So we'll use SimPaz for that. Okay. I'm going to do model.fit, and let's do what labels is, let's get the standardized labels, and layout, I'm going to try spring, see what that looks like. So, well, it's a little crunchy, but university is predicting health, and it's also predicting psych. My three psych variables are pretty good, my two, three health variables are good, and then this one's the one that's hard to read um, because the variances are overlapping a little bit, but um, my school and my class are not very good. <clears throat> um, and then there's no variance here because it's a composite score. <clears throat> so that's our picture that we would include. And let's look at the fit indices. So I didn't ask for them in a summary statement. Instead, I'm going to do fit indices of oh, fit measure. Sorry, is model.fit. So we can get all of them. Let's make it a little smaller so it's readable. Let's go back to Word over here. All right. So chi squares. Let's do our chi squares. So 180.31. It's 23 degrees of freedom, and that's significant, but not too surprising because chi-square is usually significant. Our CFI is 0.90, our TLI is 0.86. Okay. So those two are here and here. Could add NFI, it's 0.89. My AIC out here, if I wanted to do some model comparisons, I would want to include that. And that will tell me if um, model one or model two is better if I start um, taking out variables from the model. My rim C is over here, a little off, so 0.151. Okay, my 90% confidence interval is 0.131 through 0.172. Okay, so this is not a good. Rim C value for us, and then the p value less than 0.001, which is also bad. Okay, so my Rim C is not indicating a very good model. SRMR is 0.089. This is an okay model. And then this is sort of hard to interpret because our Rim C is bad, our SMR, RMR is okay, our CFI is okay, our TLI is not so good. So we've got like a mixed bag, so it's half and half. Um, and this is where you might start trying to change some of the model. Um, see if maybe if I take out those university composites, uh, it works a little better. So maybe taking out some of the variables, that sort of thing, because maybe they're suppressing each other. They're too highly correlated, and so they, um, they don't want to work together. And then the last thing, interpret the path coefficients. So let me go back to my output. Let me just rerun my summary. 
I'll make it a little bigger so you can read it. And so I'm going to use, um, I can use the estimate here, or you can use standardize all. But if you use the estimate, you can't, this one's scaled, so it doesn't really help you. But if I use standardize all, it's basically a z-score. So for every one standard deviation increase in psych, we get a 0.9 standard deviation increase in depression. Okay. So all of our um, paths here, depression, anxiety, and stress, are positively related to our psych variable. So as um, our psych mental health issues go up, the depression, anxiety, stress indicators also go up. Okay. And that's what you'd expect. Remember, all of these are scaled where higher scores are bad. Okay. So as health issues go up, uh, chronic, issue, chronic health becomes more problematic, physical health, um, where maybe you're sitting on your couch eating Cheetos instead of going to the gym, that goes up, and your sexual health issues also go up. So you're making poorer choices. Okay. <clears throat> and so as all of the health problems, if you want to think about health problems, um, go up, the health variable is also going up. So as health problems go up, each individual area is also getting more, more problematic. I'm going to hang on to this one and come back to it in just a second. So I'm going to look at my composite score as well. Class perception and social perception don't seem to matter, but as we're having more problems with our learning environments, we don't feel like the professors are there for us, we don't feel like we have academic support, maybe the major that you were interested in isn't working out for you, we're getting a higher university, uh, a higher bad university score. So if you want to think about this as kind of withdrawal, so the more you feel like you need to leave, um, the higher the, the learning problems are. So the more learning problems you have, the more you feel like you need to leave. <clears throat> okay. Now remembering this, the way that this is scored for our university one here, the more problems I'm having at the university, the more psychology and mental health issues I seem to be having, and the more health issues. But it seems to affect my health a little bit more, since I'm looking at the standardized variables, than my mental health issues. <clears throat> And so um, maybe I'm just not leaving my room, or if you have a chronic health issue, that might be sending you to the doctor more. And so interpretation of this, given the scaling, is that as the university problems go up, so do the mental health and uh, physical health problems also go up. That is how I would interpret those. Okay. Now, if you want like a, a real number, remember these are standard deviation units since they're totally standardized. Um, this one is in the scale of the variable, but that's not super helpful since we didn't standardize it, since it's got scaling on it. Um, if you wanted to know what the other number would be, you could switch which one is scaled. And the way you do that is switch the order that they're written in the model. So it picks whichever one's first to scale. Um, you could also use standardize on the latent. Uh, so standardize on the latent uh, forces the variance of the latent to be one, and then leaves it in the scale of the data. Alright, so all that being said, that is how you would create a full structural model, including using the two different types of um, factor variables, where one is composite and the other one's more traditional factor.